You know, the Harris campaign is asking for a second debate. Their answer was basically she did so well and Trump did so poorly that they want to do that all over again. Mr. When you President, win the debate, I don't, so, I don't Mr. know President, that I want to do another debate. Right. Uh, so you do. I, right at the end, as I was interrupting. So you you don't know if you want to do another debate. It sounds like you're a no. Earlier this morning, an obviously panicked and emotional Donald Trump called in to a group therapy session at Fox and Friends to compensate for the disastrous public humiliation he suffered in last night's debate against Vice President Kamala Harris, going so far as to reject the vice president's offer for a second debate. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video. And full disclosure, today is probably going to be a day of videos of us just taking a victory lap, many victory laps, because last night's debate between the vice president and Donald Trump went so poorly for Trump and for MAGA Republicans that we just have to we have to bask in their despair. And we should actually start with the man himself, the convicted felon, adjudicated rapist and insurrectionist Donald Trump. So just to set the stage here. In the aftermath of last night's debate, uh, the Harris campaign asked the Trump campaign for another debate. Another, please. Good evening, Trace. You know, the Harris campaign is asking for a second debate. Uh, So we asked why, if they feel so good about how she did tonight, what is the need to put her up a second time? Their answer was basically she did so well and Trump did so poorly that they want to do that all over again. That is their view. Uh, It's also the view of... Most Americans polled. Um, We'll get into that probably in a separate video, but I just played that clip to set the stage for Trump's answer in this other clip I'm about to play when he called into Fox and Friends. So again, it's kind of the highlight of it, and then we'll get into other highlights in chronological order of this, uh, again, this group therapy session that Trump needed this morning. So this is him in response to the idea of a second debate with the vice president. So, Mr. President, I don't know that I want to do another debate. Right. Uh, so you do. I, right at the end, as I was interrupting. So you you don't know if you want to do another debate. It sounds like you're a no. Well, I'd be less inclined to because we had a great night. We won the debate. We had a terrible, a terrible network. I think they were terrible. They should be embarrassed. I mean, they kept correcting me, and I, what I said was largely right, or I hope it was right. But what they said was absolutely wrong. The other, you know, what her, what she said, and they were, they refused to correct. I even complained a couple of times. Why are So again, he's not inclined, he says, to have another debate because he did so well. Defies, again, the vast majority of the response, the polls, the polls of undecided voters um, overwhelmingly favor Vice President Kamala Harris after that debate. But with that in mind, let's play some again, some other clips from this group therapy session from Fox and Friends. Trump, Mr. President, how do you feel about the night? 105 minutes long. You've done this before. I think your eighth one. What is your review of your of your performance? Well, I looked at the poll numbers. I listened to Harold Ford. I don't know what he was watching uh, because I think he wasn't watching the debate that I was in yesterday. I think we did great. Uh, it was three to one. It was a rigged deal, as as I assumed it would be, because when you looked at the uh, the fact that they were correcting everything and not correcting with her. And we knew it when it was 100 percent good coverage for her over the last month or last year. I looked at it and only bad coverage of me, no matter what. The the press is so dishonest in this country. It's amazing. Now, I didn't mind because, frankly, I knew I, I was pretty sure that's what they would do. CNN was much more honorable. The debate we had with uh, Biden was a much more honorably run debate. But this was incredible. I mean, everything, so many things I said were debunked, totally debunked, like Charlottesville. Uh, like So that's Trump complaining about the refs. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you actually watch the debate and I live streamed it with Luke Beasley last night, you should definitely check out the stream and you should check out the debate as well. Uh, The fact of the matter is they did ask tough questions of Vice President Kamala Harris. As a matter of fact, the very first question was posed to the vice president specifically, and it was a tough question, which regrettably, irrationally, Trump leads on, which is this idea, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Well, the fact of the matter is yes, because four years ago was 2020 during the height of the COVID pandemic. 
2024 has its problems, but it's just objectively better than what we saw, the economic catastrophe, um, the, you know, empty grocery stores, the empty uh, supermarkets, the uh, supply chain issues, the hundreds of thousands of Americans dying, uh, the shutdown economy. All of that was under Donald Trump. And by the way, also a stratospheric spike in crime. But unfortunately, because the American people struggle to understand and remember time, we tend to look back at 2020. Either they forget that Donald Trump was president at that time or we memory hold that traumatic year. And so the fact of the matter is that the vice president polls much more poorly on that issue than Trump. That was the very first question. It was a tough question posed to the vice president. She just had a better answer for it. She was more agile on her feet consistently than Donald Trump. They asked all sorts of tough questions. They once again, you know, accused her effectively of flip-flopping. Why have your policies changed over a course of five years feeding into a Republican narrative that Donald Trump is this constant fixture of policy and the vice president flip-flops for political expedience, even though the opposite is true? Uh, they also basically teed her up to, again, publicly defy her current boss and former running mate, the current president of the United States, President Biden, by, again, asking a question effectively to uh, rebuke him on his Gaza policy, right? That put her in a pickle. And again, the tough questions were there. They also gave Trump every opportunity to have the last word when he demanded it. But Trump is complaining about his poor performance, blaming it on the moderators. It's pretty pathetic stuff. Got another clip here. I think they lost a lot of credibility. But regardless, look, the polls are saying that I was I won that by 80, 20, 90, his, we have one here, 92 to 7. And I sort of believe that's right. I thought, look. I yeah, so the reputable polls have Trump losing that debate between 65 and 70 percent to 30 to 35 percent. That's how bad it was. He's quoting, you know, a snap poll on Newsmax of all places, right? He might as well be polling his entourage. You know, I asked all, like the five, I asked Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, Laura Ingram, Jesse Waters, Tucker Carlson, who won? And they all said I won. So it's like 100 percent people say I won. Pretty pathetic stuff. So pathetic, by the way, that Trump has been demanding, demanding that Vice President Harris debate him on Fox News. Well, that was when he was open to a second debate. Now, not only, as we played in the first clip, does he seem completely uninterested in a second debate, but on the topic of a Fox-moderated debate, he's actually walking back from the two moderators that he said should debate it because he's that rattled, he's that scared of Vice President Kamala Harris that he doesn't think even on Fox with conservative-leaning uh, pundits moderating that it will be enough to save him. So he says, hey, those, those two moderators that I previously recommended for a hypothetical Fox debate with Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, we actually need some different moderators. And the names he offers are pretty ridiculous. Well, Mr. President, uh, I know uh, when we started the interview, you said that uh, you felt that you won the debate last night, uh, your best ever. Um, I think before the debate happened last night, the Kamala Harris people said that they would actually like to do another debate in October. And I know that uh, last night Fox News uh, offered, sent letters to your campaign and her campaign offering three dates of uh, debates moderated by Martha and Brett. Uh, one is October 9th in Arizona. Well, I wouldn't want one to have Martha and Brett. I'd, I'd love to have somebody else other than Martha and Brett. I'd love to have, uh, frankly, Sean or Jesse or Laura, uh, you know, somebody else. Let's give, let's give other people a shot. But I didn't think Martha and Brett were... Uh, well, good last night. Well, I thought here, Jesse was Jesse was fantastic last night. What he said, Jesse really got it. Jesse said Trump won that debate. That was we won that debate by a lot. No, I wouldn't want Martha involved. Okay, I would, Mr. President, but I would take some others. So, yeah. so these are the dates. That so again, Donald Trump is so triggered, and Martha McCallum and Brett Bayer, two openly conservative Trump leaning moderators, who simply have or can occasionally exercise a modicum of professional journalism, not always, but certainly much more than Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram and Jesse Waters, that is beyond the pale. That's unacceptable. So instead, he wants Jesse Waters because Jesse Waters said that he won the debate and praised him you know, profusely and obsequiously. That's Donald Trump's standard for debate moderator. That's his security blanket. 
He needs that security. He needs that protection because he can't stand on his own two feet in a debate against a competent debater like Vice President Harris. Pretty pathetic stuff. And again, you can even see the the kind of perplexion on Fox and Friends who, you know, are certainly more in the bag for Trump even than Martha and Brett, but that their colleagues are being thrown under the bus uh, for being seen as insufficiently loyal or insufficiently obsequious. And he's doing it on Fox in real time to their faces. You can see the awkwardness. Um, but that's pretty pathetic of Donald Trump. Another clip. And I hope that Lawrence, if you're listening, Lawrence, I hope you go and do a little shout out poll. And I don't know the people there, but I love the people there. I can see it. But why don't you do a shout out poll who they thought won the debate last night? It would be great. <laughs> you know, we always do the poll at the end, Mr. President. Yeah. Go to this MAGA diner where everyone's dressed up like MAGA and ask him who won and did, but show it. Come on, Lawrence, show it. Uh, so absolutely pathetic and weak. And I've got one more clip, I suppose, because it's always fun watching Donald Trump cope or listening to Donald Trump cope in this particular instance. He's probably too afraid to show his uh, orange uh, defeated face, his visage to the American people. But we can hear it in your voice, Donald. One last clip uh, of him just casually throwing out a conspiracy theory to explain how Vice President Harris did so well, even though he also says she did poorly and he won by overwhelming numbers. Pretty incoherent stuff, but here he is. Kamala doesn't do any show. She doesn't do interviews. She doesn't talk to people. She doesn't do anything like that. And that's not fair to the public because they don't know what they're getting. But they saw last night what they had. They had a rigged show with somebody that maybe even had the answers. I mean, I'll be honest, what, I watched her talk and I said, you know, she seems awfully familiar with the questions and you get pretty good at that stuff. So there you have it. Donald Trump is convinced that the vice president did so damn poorly. I mean, it was a total blowout in his favor, but also she did well enough in her answers that it indicates that the moderators must have given her the questions in advance to allow her to prepare. Um, also, even though he did so damn well, he doesn't really have any interest in a second follow up debate. But if he did have a second follow up debate on Fox News, of all places, we can't have Martha McCallum and Brett Baer moderate the debate, even though he was perfectly content with that in the past. Now it has to be Jesse Waters, Laura Ingram uh, or Sean Hannity, uh, because they say that he won this debate and he wants impartial moderators, but impartial in the sense that they favor him. The whole thing is just a jumbled encapsulation of Donald Trump's obvious cognitive decline and narcissism and insecurity and the fact that he knows on some deep level, deep down, deep down, that he got his ass kicked and everybody knows it and everybody's making fun of him as well we should and we should delight in his despair and their despair because they deserve it. And in the meantime, you let me know what you think in the comments.